Hello and welcome back to the BMAT Tip Series. My name is Ali, I'll be your host for this episode. And today we're going to be talking about Section 2 Maths and I'm going to be giving you some top tips on how to do well in it. I am recording this in Ho Chi Minh City Airport. Uh, we've got about an hour left until our flight, so I thought I'd do the totally normal thing and bust out the camera and record a video about the BMAT. Anyway, let's just jump right into it. There are three important tips that we're going to be going over today. Number one is going to be about fractions. Number two is going to be about times tables. And number three is going to be about guessing an answer and moving on. Let's start with point number one, fractions. There is a mantra that we teach on all of our BMAT crash courses, and we've been teaching it for the last five years, and students have found it enormously helpful. And that mantra is fractions are our friends. Why do we say this? We say this because fractions come up pretty much throughout the whole BMAT paper. Section one problem solving involves fractions. Section 2 Chemistry involves fractions, Section 2 Physics and Section 2 Maths all involve fractions. In fact, the only thing that doesn't involve fractions is Section 1 Critical Thinking, which is about 17 questions in the whole paper, and Section 3, which is the writing task, obviously. So getting good at fractions is a really good way of boosting your BMAT score. In fact, if there's only one thing you do between now and the BMAT, improving your skill at fractions is probably going to give you the biggest increase in BMAT score. What do we mean by fractions? Well, firstly, you need to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and simplify fractions quite easily and quite quickly. And secondly, you need to be able to convert percentages and decimals into fractions, because numbers are far easier to work with when they're in fraction form than when they're in percentage or decimal form usually. In fact, what we, what we recommend for when you're doing any kind of BMAT question, if you ever see a number in percentage or decimal form, just convert it to a fraction straight away, because chances are you'll need it in fraction form to be able to work with it later on. Obviously, this is when, within reason. If you see 0 0.28 and you have to multiply it by 100, you don't need to convert that into a fraction to do that. Just, you know, use a bit of common sense with this. Fractions are our friends. Fractions are really important. Doing well at fractions is going to boost our BMAT score. Secondly, let's talk about mental maths. Getting pro at mental maths is kind of associated with the whole fractions thing, but getting pro at mental maths will also massively boost your BMAT score. Because, like I said, Section 1 Problem Solving, Section 2 Chemistry, Section 2 Physics, and Section 2 Maths all involve maths of some sort. Usually that requires you to do some kind of thing with fractions, and being good at mental maths will just speed that up. So, actionable points, please, please, please know your times tables at least up to 12 inside out. You shouldn't be having to think when asked, you know, if a question requires you to work out 7 times 8 or like 9 times 6 or stuff like that. Unfortunately, the people who are the best at mental maths tend to do very well in the BMAT as well, uh, because you just save so much time if you can do these calculations quickly. Of course, in the BMAT, you're not allowed a calculator, so you have to do everything in your head. And there are almost no questions in the BMAT that require you to do like long division or like long multiplication or things like that. It's all short, snappy sums, plus, minus, times, divide that you can just do in your head. One way of practicing your mental math is actually a website called speedsums.com, which was coincidentally made by my brother. And in that, you just take 30 seconds and just do lots of mental math sums as quickly as you can. And it gives you a leaderboard. It's kind of like that brain training Nintendo DS program that uh, we used to play back in the day. I don't know if you guys still play that thing, whether it's still around, but when I was in school, you'd challenge your maths teachers to a competition of brain training to see who could do the most mental math sums in under 10 seconds or something like that. Anyway, yeah, mental maths is the way forward. Getting pro at mental maths will improve your section two math score, but as I said, it'll also improve your score in section one problem solving, section two chemistry, section two physics. So that was point number two. Point number three, please don't be afraid to guess an answer and move on. And this applies very much to the maths questions in section two. Quite a lot of the maths section two questions are pretty hard and ordinarily you wouldn't be able to do them in under one minute. There are gonna be about seven section two maths questions and maybe three or four of them are gonna be not doable in one minute if you're a normal person. So the trick to doing well in section two maths is to recognize these questions quite quickly on and just get an answer and move on they're not worth your time. In fact, what we've seen quite a few times through the years is that we get some students who are amazing at maths, who've got 100% in their GCSE, 100% in their ASs, who've got gold medals in the maths Olympiads, that sort of thing, and yet they still get a low section two mark. And I think one of the reasons for that is that when it comes to the maths questions, they get this kind of thing in their head that, right, this is a maths question, I know it's only GCSE standard, I'm gonna get this question right. And then they spend three minutes on the question and end up leaving five questions in the whole paper blank. That's not the way forward. Please recognize the hard math questions and don't even attempt them if you think you can't do them in under a minute. What I did when I was taking the BMAT and each year when I do the BMAT section two paper under time conditions is that if I see a math question and it requires some kind of shape thing, um, I just get an answer and leave it until the end. Because I know that the BMAT math shape questions are gonna be quite hard, I'm not very good at kind of rotating shapes in my head, that sort of thing. I would just leave it till the end, come back to it. Because ultimately we wanna be finishing the paper, putting down an answer for all 27 questions at least, and then we can always come back to it 
if we have time in the end, which we probably won't because section two is quite hard and quite time intensive. So yeah, if you find that it's taking you over a minute to answer any question in section two, especially the math questions, just guess an answer, move on, come back to it at the end if you've got time. And even better, if you can identify in the first 10 seconds that this question is gonna take you a long time, don't even bother attempting it. Just guess an answer, move on, come back to it at the end if you've got time. So those were my top three tips for how to do well in section two maths. Number one, fractions are our friends, which applies to the rest of the BMAT as well. Number two, please get good at mental maths which applies to the rest of the BMAT as well. And number three, please don't be afraid to leave a question and move on, which actually also applies to the whole BMAT, but is especially true of the maths questions because those are the ones that people, for some reason, don't seem to want to skip. Uh, not quite sure why. Let's talk about content now. You'll notice that none of the three top tips were anything to do with content, really. They were more about like mental maths and skills with fractions and things. Finally, let's talk about practice. If you've watched the other videos, you know I keep hawking on about practice and I keep on saying that the best way to do well in section one and section two is just do lots and lots of practice questions. This is kind of true for section two maths as well. And I say kind of because obviously doing more questions is useful, but section two maths is not like section one critical thinking, for example, where if you do 500 questions, you'll probably do very well. Section two maths tends not to be that formulaic. The questions are usually quite novel every year and it takes a bit of intuition, a bit of mathematical reasoning to get the answer. So the best way to practice the maths questions is doing lots of them, uh, but also doing them under strict time conditions and even more importantly, making sure you know where you went wrong for questions you've got wrong so that you can develop the intuition, you can develop the skills and if that question type comes up again, then you'll be you'll be able to know what's going on. Very conveniently, there is a website called BMAT Ninja, uh, which I plug in every single one of these videos, which is amazing for this. On BMAT Ninja, there are like 2,000 free BMAT questions of which a few hundred are maths questions that you can just do completely free of charge. And if you're serious about the BMAT, this is pretty much a no brainer. We've got all of the BMAT questions from the last like 15 years worth of papers and then some that we've written ourselves that you can do completely free of charge, so you might as well. And if you do get stuff wrong, we've also got work solutions to every single question in the question bank that were written by Oxbridge medical students who tried to kind of explain the reasoning behind it, explain how they got the answer in an efficient fashion. Yes, we do charge 29 pounds for access to these work solutions, uh, partly because we had to pay thousands of pounds to get the Oxbridge medical students to actually write them in the first place. But if money is an issue, we have a massive bursary scheme that gives out like tens of thousands of pounds to students each year. You literally just send us an email and we will give you you whatever discount you want off the solutions or off anything on the website so I mean if you can afford it 29 pounds isn't much if you can't get in touch with us we'll work something out so yeah let's conclude this video um, and I will go off to catch my flight we've talked about three top tips for the VMAT those were number one fractions are our friends number two please let's learn our mental maths and times tables and point number three let's not be afraid to guess and move on because the math questions are quite hard and finally, we talked a little bit about practice, where I mentioned you should be doing all of the questions on BMAT Ninja. You might as well, they're all available for free. It's pretty much a no-brainer. And if you want, you can, you can pay for access to the solutions, or you can just comment over here if you're having difficulty with something, and I will get back to you with a work solution as soon as I can. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, if you haven't seen the rest of the videos in the series, I recommend you check them out. They're pretty reasonable, and I give some pretty reasonable advice. In the next few videos, we'll be talking about section three, and then after that, we might do a deeper dive into some of the section one and section two topics. If you've got any questions about the BMAT, or about anything at all, or if you'd like to suggest some topics that I can cover in one of these videos, please let me know in the comments below and I will definitely get back to you. Not many people comment on these videos at the moment, so like I you know, genuinely do read everything and will take it into account. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've gained something from it. Have a lovely evening and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.